Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at the Pixar Ramp node and how you can use it in a couple of different ways. So I've got a scene set up here with a light facing a plane and what I'm going to do is start by selecting the plane and applying a Pixar Surface Shader to it and jumping into the Hypershade Editor. With the Pixar Surface mapped out, we're just going to hit Tab and type in Ramp and we get a Pixar Ramp node. Uh, hit 3 on that node to expand it and we'll just run the result RGB into the diffuse color and uh, we'll create five nodes on our ramp and then we'll just give them a couple of colors all right let's just have a render of that okay so as you can see in our render we've got a um, the plane that you can see there in the in the out uh, in the viewport and that's just got that ramp applied to it so it's transitioning from the red to the um, indigo at the end there so if we look at that ramp node i'll just bring it up in the attribute editor here so essentially obviously each node just defines whereabouts uh, that color is going to place uh, this plane is already automatically being UV'd so that one square is going to fill up the entire uv space uh, but you'll notice that the ramp type it's got s ramp um, so S-Ramp is going to be left to right in this case, um, and T-Ramp is going to be up and down. So uh, that's worth keeping in mind depending on how you're trying to apply the, the ramp. Um, then next you've got your colors, so color zero and its position and so on and so forth through that. We can also reverse the colors from left to right or right to left. left. Um, and you've also got spline type. So Camel ROM is the one that you're probably generally going to be sticking with. It gives a nice smooth transition between um, the, the the highest point of the node, say that blue for example, and then it transitions nicely out into the um, lighter blue to the green. Uh, but if you set it to linear, you can see it sort of pinches on um, each node, which may be what you're after, but um, a lot of the time you want a smooth transition. And sometimes you just want a flat transition. Um, if that's the case, you want to set the spline type to none. We're going to stick with Catmore ROM for now though. Um, spline map is something um, I'll take a look at in the next tutorial this, uh, this week, I believe. Uh, so stick around for that. I'm going to use that and give you a much better example than what I can do here. Um, so the next ramp type is diagonal. So obviously it just flips on the diagonal and you could reverse that as well. Uh, radial will just center the ramp from a center point on the, uh, UV, uh, on the ST space and then uh, radial it out from there. Uh, circular is obviously just a circular from the center. Um, and once again, you can reverse that. So you've got your center point will shift to the left instead of being the right, which is the indigo color. Uh, box is basically the same as circular, but it's a box. Um, four corner is actually meant to look a little bit different than this. It's, for some reason, it's running up a bit weird. I'm not quite sure why, but um, basically it's, um, it, assigns a color per corner maybe if i remove a node there we go so if we put a um if we have four nodes there it's going to give us a color in each corner as you can see and then finally we've got random object color uh, now this one is a little bit easier to show if i just select that plane and duplicate it so what's happening here is that because you've got the same shader applied to each of the planes it's looking at it and saying okay there's multiple objects here um, what I'll do is assign a, a different color based on this ramp anywhere in the ramps gradient to each one of these and you can adjust the um, what random color you'll get by changing the seed so the seed points just where the random number is generated from using a random number generator algorithm so this can be a good way of if you've got like you know tons of different uh, toys in a scene for example and they're all the same but you want them all to have slightly different colors um, you can add in a ramp and you can have less colors if you want so you can you could even just have two colors you want some to be blue randomly and some to be uh, red randomly then you can uh, set it to none and then we can and then now you see that you only get red and blue if you've got it set to Catmull ROM or linear, you'll get the gradation between the two. But um, having it set to uh, none will give you obviously that clean cut blue or red. Um, and the manifold node um, is not really explainable in this particular tutorial, but essentially it's using a manifold, uh, 2D manifold generally to define its pl uh, positional placement within the S and T space. 
Um, but you'll see me use manifold nodes in other tutorials, um, or you've probably already seen me use them in, in tutorials in the past. So um, I'll explain those in other tutorials. If you want me to do a specific tutorial on those, I can as well. Um, but that's really all there is to the ramp node. Um, it's used in lots and lots and lots of things. Sometimes you're just using it to get a flat color if you don't have a color input. Uh, on your particular uh, shading uh, node that you're using. Uh, sometimes you're using it for uh, an alpha. You could obviously set it from uh, black to white to create a gradiated alpha input or randomized uh, input. Uh, it's up to you. So there's a whole lot of different ways you could um, use this. But uh, those are just a couple of examples. I use this ramp all the time and you'll see me use them a bunch in tutorials. So I wanted to make sure I did a little explanation on all the different things. So when you see me doing uh, stuff with it, you'll understand why. Um, so for the spline map um, input, make sure you check out the tutorial that's going to be on uh, the Pixar facing ratio. I'll use the spline map in that one and it'll give you a better understanding of that. Now I think that's going to be the next tutorial. Uh, so check that one out after this one. Um, it'll either be the following Thursday or the following Monday, depending on what day this goes out. Uh, so that's it for this one though. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like the tutorial, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of tutorials every week on um, CG products like RenderMan and other software as well. If you would like to stay up to date even further, check out the Facebook page link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.